Hey, what's going on everyone? Appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Starfield video. In this one, I'm going to be sharing with y'all a bunch of tips and tricks for outpost building. Hopefully this is able to help you out in some kind of way. I know these tips and tricks helped me out, especially when first starting to get into outpost building. So yeah, hopefully it's able to do the same for you guys. Also, be sure to stick around until the end of the video because at the end I'll be showing y'all where to go to get all the materials that you're going to be needing to build outposts. So yeah, if you're needing help with that, feel free to stick around until the end. I'm going to be sharing with y'all a glitch that you can do to get all the resources that you're going to need for completely free. It's definitely a beneficial one to take advantage of. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into all these tips and tricks now. Enjoy. Alright, so these first few tips will be over how to find a good location to place your outpost. Now, what you're going to be wanting to look for is a good planet or moon that has plenty of great resources available for you to extract. At your outpost. A good location for beginner players and even in-game players is over at Narion. You're going to be getting loads of XP over at the Androphon moon at the Narion system, which is located right here. This is the moon of Samadhi. So when you go here, the moon is going to first look like this. It's just going to be blank like this. But as you can see at the left hand side over there, you can hold in LB if you're on Xbox to show resources. Of course, if you're on PC, it's going to be a different button, but it states how to show resources over at the left hand side. So that's another little tip to keep in mind. When you go and show resources, you'll be able to see where different ones are located at. As you can see, for example, here, iron's located here. We got helium three right here, aluminum right here, and beryllium right here. You can also see all the resources that are available at this area at the left hand side as well. We got helium three, aluminum, iron, beryllium, and europium. So yeah, quite a bit of different resources that we could extract from. Which by the way, another tip that I wanted to get into before I go ahead and touch down here and place my outpost is a skill that I suggest investing into if you want to see different resources available on the planet or moon before touching down and placing your outpost. And that is the skill called scanning, which is located in the science category. This skill will make it so you can detect different resources on the planet or moon before you go and, you know, start searching around where they're located at. Now, you don't have to technically have this skill for them to be on the planet or moon. These just help locate those resources a little faster. Like, for instance, you know, the higher you get this, the more rare resources you're going to be able to see by scanning, like I just showed you, on the planet or moon before going there and looking for them. But yeah, another skill I suggest investing into before I go ahead and get into the other tips is planetary habitation. This will allow you to build outposts on different kinds of planets and moons that have like extreme atmospheres, such as like deep freeze or inferno temperatures, or maybe the planet has extreme pressure, or heck, as you see here for rank three, the planets may have toxic or corrosive atmospheres. You'll be able to build outposts on those kind of planets and moons, which this is convenient because some areas will have like the greatest resources available but in order to build at that area you're going to have to invest in planetary habitation so if you're ever having problems placing your outpost you're, the reason why more than likely is because you haven't invested into this skill here which by the way you can see like the different atmospheres and temperatures and whatnot of each planet and moon on the left side where you can find the resources at as well as you can see here for example venus has an inferno temperature so you will need the planetary habitation to make an outpost on this planet so yeah now let's go ahead and get into building the outpost as you can see here i already got one set up but how i located this spot i first looked for where iron is located at and aluminum and then my idea was to get my outpost in the middle of these because I want to utilize both of these resources at my outpost. So how I did that was I would keep clicking A until it stated a different biome. So right now this is craters, right? But a little over here we got mountains. So then once I found that sweet spot where the craters biome was right by the mountains biome, I would go ahead and land there. And then after I landed, I would then search around for a place to place my outpost where both iron and aluminum resources were available at. I suggest pressing LB and pulling out your outpost while you're searching and eventually you will find a sweet spot where iron and aluminum are both available. It may take a little while to find both of them but as you can see right here I got iron and aluminum both available if I place my outpost here which I already have an outpost placed here so I don't have to do that but also what you want to look for while you are looking where to place your outpost you can see the different biomes like they're just you know different 
in their own kind of ways. For example, here on Androphon, this area over here looks different from this area. So I found like the in-between right here where they're both kind of combined because, you know, aluminum is in a different biome than where iron typically is. You want to find that sweet spot. It may take you a few tries and uh, that's okay because when you do find this sweet spot, oh, it pays off. You're going to get so many levels so quickly. I'm telling you guys, it's definitely worth it. Um, and another little note I wanted to add here, when you are looking for where to place your outpost, don't worry about if you don't find it on your first try. I actually landed at a quite a few different places before I eventually found where aluminum and iron was both located at. You know, so if you don't find it and you search for a while after touching down, try touching down again in another area that's close by. You'll generate another fresh area to search around on. Like if I didn't find it from touching down right here, you know, I'll just fast travel like right here. Still kind of close by and I'm still in between iron and aluminum and I'll just give it another go except looking from this area, you know, just refreshing things a little bit. So yeah, those are some tips on finding a good outpost on a planet or moon. You want to be looking for where a bunch of different resources are available at. In general, iron and aluminum, having them both together is freaking amazing. I'm about to be getting into that next. So yeah, now let's get into outpost building here. We now went over a few skills and we've now found a good location to build at. So next up, when you pull up the build menu here, you will notice we now have an aluminum extractor and an iron extractor. The reason why we have these is because both of those resources were available here where I placed my outpost. And what you wanna to do to set these, you wanna look for the highlighted areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle my view. You can see how to do that at the bottom. So this is how you toggle your view. And yeah, this is where I could place aluminum extractors at, over here in this highlighted area. Now I could reposition my outpost a little bit more to get more of this highlighted area if I wanted to, but honestly having just like three or four aluminum extractors is plenty. Trust me, you'll see. But yeah, so once you got your aluminum extractors down, you then want to add some storage containers, which you can find these by, you know, going over in your menu here, and they're located right here in the storage category. You want to place a few of these. You don't have to place as many as I have here. You know, you could start simple and just place like, you know, two or three. So once you've put down storage containers, you then want to link these to the extractors that you have set up. So I'm just starting right now with the aluminum. So in order to link, you can see at the bottom, it states create output link by pressing right trigger. So what you would do is bring this over to one of the storage containers. And then once you have it hooked up to the storage container, you can then link that storage container with all of the others, if that makes sense. So how you do that is pressing right trigger again, and I don't have these linked, you can see, because they're blue right now. So what I do is go over to the blue ones, and I'll press A on this one. Now that's linked to this. Now I'll press A on that one. Now that's linked. Now I'll press A on this one. Now that's linked. And so on and so forth. You want to link all of the storage containers so that way the extractor shares with all these containers so yeah now I got all these hooked up yep there's no more blues going on here so now this one storage container will share with all the others as well once it gets full with aluminum that is extracted from this extractor then you just want to do the same here bring a link over to another storage container like I have this one at the top over here. And then, once I have it hooked up, I press right trigger and hook it up. Right trigger and then link it to that storage container. Right trigger and link it to that storage container. Right trigger and link it to that storage container. And yeah, that's how you get them to share with one another. So you don't have to link all of them or all of them individually, you know? It's very easy once you start to understand like the concept over how this works. I was overwhelmed at first with outpost building and then eventually I just started to like throw myself out there in the deep end if you know what I'm saying and I just kind of caught on with how things work but yeah it's really not that complicated once you start getting things down so then I want to do the same thing here so then I'm going to do the same thing here with this one this is already linked up got it all the way over here and then I want to link this one that's linked up already 
to all of the others that are highlighted that states it's not linked to yet. But yeah, now I got them all linked together. Bada bing, bada boom. That easy. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. So next, we want to go back to our extractors here and then go to iron. And now we're going to be looking for this highlighted area, a red highlighted area for these iron extractors. This is where I can place them at. And we're going to be doing the same thing here. Going over to them, pressing right trigger to create the output link or whatever you're on. And then you just go over to the storage container, hook up the link. And once you got the link hooked up, you then press right trigger on that storage container. And then you just hook up the ones that aren't hooked up by linking them over from this storage container. So yeah, all the iron now will be shared to all of these storage containers from this one extractor. I didn't have to create like multiple links, if you know what I'm saying, from this extractor anyways. I just created multiple links from this one storage container. So all the things that get extracted from this iron extractor will be shared with all the other storage containers right here. If that makes sense. So yeah, it's, once again, literally that simple, guys. Keep doing the same thing here. Go to the next extractor, link it to another storage container, like this one, and then link them all together. Bam. So yeah, those are a few pointers over linking. It can be kind of overwhelming at first, I know, but you'll get it down. I have faith in you guys, especially, you know, you can just simply rewind this video and just pay attention more about what I said if you are a little confused over anything. That's the power of videos. <laughs> you can always rewind or slow down or that's the convenience of them. Anyways, next let's go ahead and get into powering up stuff. So we can see how much power we're going to need at the bottom. It states I need 45 power. I actually have a total of 48 power going on here though. But yeah. So what you want to do is place these solar arrays. Certain planets require certain power generators. But here on Androphon you can use solar arrays. And they're pretty simple to make. All you're going to need is beryllium, copper, and aluminum. And yeah, you just want to place a bunch of these. Each of these are going to be worth six. As you saw there, now I'm boosted up to 54 total power. And you just want to place these around in an area. They don't have to technically be close to the extractors or the storage containers. They just have to be somewhere in your outpost vicinity. Like I could place all the solar arrays down here if I wanted to. It doesn't matter how close they are or anything. Just as long as they're around in your outpost vicinity, they're going to power up everything. So once you got these running, congratulations, you now got a farm going on here where you can collect aluminum and iron. So now I'm going to show you all how this works. As you can see, if you wait 24 hours here, or if you go to Venus and wait some hours, but yeah, you could just wait like 24 hours here. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. I just placed a bed here, by the way, you can do that. All right, so I just slept for 24 hours. Now, if you go up to your storage containers, you should see that you have a bunch of aluminum on this side where your aluminum extractors were going to. I'm working with loads there. And over here on this side, I got a bunch of iron. You can also see which ones are filled by the green light, too, by the way. So pay attention to that. If they're red, that's not generating anything, or it's empty, one or the other. Dang, there's 400-something in that one alone. That's insane. But yeah, you get it. I got loads of iron now over on this side and loads of aluminum over on this side. Now, what you want to do is add an industrial workbench. So go back to your outpost, build menu, and add an industrial workbench. And you can find those in uh, crafting, as you can see. Doesn't take much, all you're gonna need is iron and aluminum. So once you got the iron and aluminum at your base, it's available, which by the way, you don't have to get them out of your storage container. That's another tip. <laughs> I used to get them out of my storage container and then I learned from comments in my video that was telling me you don't gotta get them out. Sheesh. So yeah, that's an important tip right there. You don't have to get them out. You can just keep them in there and you're going to be able to craft these things that I'm about to be showing you all that you can craft for XP. Also, you want to place down a bed. That's another tip. The reason why you want a bed is because you get an XP buff as well. So just place one of these down. Which, speaking of, if you can't make a bed, oh well. You can go sleep on your ship and then come back here. You want to get that XP buff because you're going to be getting quite a bit of extra XP. I'll go ahead and show you all. If you pull up the menu here then press Y. 
I got an XP buff going on for 15% experience gain. It's called emotional security, which I get this one because I'm married to my companion and I sleep with her in the bed. So I get the 15% experience gain. However, if you're not married with your companion, you will get a 10% experience gain. Still, nonetheless, that adds up. So you want that uh, experience gain. Also, if, if you got anything else that you could get some extra XP, like for instance, I got some Tricola tea here. I could drink this for a little bit of extra XP. And there's also food you need too that could stack with these. So yeah, you can really add up your extra XP. But anyways, um, once you got that going on, you then want to go over to the industrial workbench. And we're going to be crafting a bunch of adaptive frames. So just tap RB to make it go over faster while holding over. I'm on the Xbox and look how fast I'm able to get it to 99. And yeah, I get this much XP each time I craft 99 of these. So this is a quick way to gain a lot of experience really quick. Like this is one of the fastest ways to be making experience. That's the reason why I wanted to show you all this place to make an outpost at and give you a bunch of tips as well. Because honestly, this is one of the best places to make a base at. This is great for end game players or beginning players. Like works both ways. You could be here until you're level 100 plus leveling up like this. You're gaining about... I don't know. It's rumored to be about like 20,000 XP per minute because on PC you can literally just have it at 99 and, and keep clicking where it's like immediate. On Xbox it's a little slower, but yeah, you will get loads of XP here per minute and especially per hour if you just stay consistent with this. As you can see, I'm already about to run out of iron and aluminum. So once that happens, you then just want to go to sleep for 24 or 48 hours. However long you go to sleep, the more is going to stock up in your storage containers. I just go to sleep for 24 hours and I... You could also go to Venus because as you know, Venus's uh, system is different. When you wait on Venus, each hour is worth 100 hours there, so time adds up there. All right, and what you wanna do with the adaptive frames once you get done crafting them, you just simply wanna drop them or you could you know, put them on your ship and sell them if you wanna take the time to do that. That's totally up to you, but I just drop them. So yeah, there's a bunch of tips. Now, since I was speaking of Venus, let me go ahead and take you all there as well. I got another great outpost location that you could find there to build an amazing outpost and gain a lot of experience really fast too. So let's go ahead and head to Venus. Like I mentioned, the time works different there. You don't have to wait as long for things to stock back up in your storage containers which Venus is located from Alpha Centauri over at the Soul System, which is located right here. Once here, you can find Venus right here. I already have a base placed here, which how I found that base was I looked for Cobalt and Nickel together. And as you can see, I found Cobalt right here and Nickel right here. And then I just kept pressing A until I found the different biomes, like I just mentioned to you all. So Rocky Desert's right there. Go back a little bit and hills is right here so you know you want to do that once again to find a good area to build an outpost at even on venus so once you find a good area to place your outpost at which you need to find cobalt and nickel together because that's how you're going to be able to use these resources for your convenience to level up really quickly i already have a base built here as you can see i got cobalt here being made and nickel as well being produced in different areas pretty awesome I did the same thing as well when setting up this I first found an area that had cobalt and nickel instead of aluminum and iron and once I found an area I then uh, placed down my extractors and linked them to the storage containers there's my cobalt extractors are right over here which it's in this blue highlight area I have them set up and I got my nickel extractors somewhere else let's see where are they at oh right here Got my nickel extractors right here. Which, by the way, you want to pull out the extractor to find the highlighted areas. So, I have my nickel out and I can see all of the areas where I can place my nickel extractors at. And when I pull out my cobalt, I can see all the areas where I can place my cobalt extractors at. So, yeah, that's how that works. Anyways, once I ended up linking all of my nickel and cobalt to the storage containers and whatnot, I then powered them up. You're going to have to power things up a little differently on this planet. You're going to have to use wind turbines. So I used a bunch of these. And then, once I had that all set up, I placed the bed and the industrial workbench. Now let me show you 
how different it works here. So first off, if you go to Industrial Workbench, instead of crafting adaptive frames, we're going to be crafting ISO-centered magnets. And yeah, we just do the same thing. We go over to 99 and craft them, over to 99 and craft them, and we keep repeating that process over and over and over and over to level up. Like I already got a level up. Um, anyways, once you get done crafting, you then want to sleep, except sleeping here isn't going to be as long. You just want to sleep for an hour. That actually equals 100 hours. So yeah, one hour is good enough to refresh everything in these containers. So that's all you got to do. That's how it works here. Alrighty, so lastly here, I'm going to be showing you all how to get the materials that you're going to be needing to build everything that I showed you all in this video. Also, even more than what I showed you all too. There is plenty of different resources you can get from this area. All you got to do is head over to Cheyenne System, which is located right here. Which, by the way, all these materials are going to be completely free too. It's a little glitch you can do. Anyways, once over here at the Cheyenne System, you want to head on over to Aquila, which that's located right here. And then head to Aquila City. So yeah, just fast travel to Aquila City. Alright, so once you're at the city, you then just want to head into town. And once you're in town, you're able to find this secret chest that's underground on the map here. This is the vendor's chest. So if you look in front of Shepherd's General Store, and then head over to this puddle that's right here, and crouch down, you can find the vendor's chest and you can loot everything in this for completely free like as you can see there's 5,000 credits right there but also there are plenty of resources that you can get from this and keep in mind you can keep resetting this chest too like there's beryllium adaptive frames here com relays iron aluminum tungsten you name it I mean you get it there's all kinds of stuff you'll find like pretty much every resource from this shop so go ahead and just loot it all and then take it onto your ship and drop it there. And you can also find plenty of other stuff too, like med packs, if you're needing those, or ammunition. You can find all kinds of ammo. Go ahead and take all of this. For some reason, ammo weighs nothing. But yeah, this is a little glitch that you can do. There's also ship parts you can take from this as well. And when you want to reset it, you just gotta wait 48 hours. And once you wait the 48 hours, there's another important step. You wanna make sure you talk to the vendor again. For some reason, the chest doesn't restock until you talk to the vendor and pull up the menu where you're trading with them again. And then just back out and go back to the chest and you'll see it's been restocked. So yeah, there you guys have it everyone. Hopefully you all found this enjoyable and it's able to help you out in some kind of way. I know this chest that I just showed you all helped me out tremendously with a lot of things. So yeah, hopefully it's the same for you all. I'm out of here though. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.